All right, hello, hello to all my guys, gals, and non-binary pals out there across the electrical ocean. This is Jazzman back with another game, and uh, we're gonna be we're gonna be playing something funny here today, or at least I I hope it'll be funny. Uh, we're going to be playing <laughs> we're going to be playing a deck that empties out all of Sundered Lands' orphanages. And if you don't know what that means, uh, soon you will. So we're going to deploy Pincushion after using Demon Call. Pincushion, of course, very, uh, very uh, obvious deploy into a Bow Mage. Down at that bottom font. And uh, we're against uh, Nolax 2, playing Full Faction Kathir Forest. And uh, this could uh, this could either go really bad or really good. And uh, of course, I'm hoping it'll go really good. But, you know, even if it does go really bad, uh, perhaps that will make for interesting content, nevertheless. So, topside, uh, he has another range champion. I could go with Pincushion, but... Mm, yeah, sure, we'll go with Pincushion. I, I could deploy him Trickster as well. Hmm. He does have Chill, though. Sort of mess up my uh, my Trickster and my split. So, I think another, another Pincushion or could go with a Mountaineer because he's fast and he's cheap. Question is, do I want to actually worry about contesting his top one? I'll just go with a pincushion. Double pincushions makes uh, makes some sense here. So he's just he's just gonna walk around, grab that font, and uh, yeah, pincushion's gonna grab top for me. Nothing too interesting happening here yet. Curious how he's gonna try and deal with his pincushion. I think he might try and vortex. Uh, and in that case, I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with a trickster now. We'll go with a trickster down here. If he vortexes now, I mean, eh, whatever. It's probably his only answer. I mean, Kathir Forest, like he doesn't have like spot CC or you know metamorphosis to deal with it. He deploys a Fade Dreamer with uh, Dream State. So his next deploy is going to have, uh, well, all of these abilities. It's going to have a buffer, for one thing, and it's going to have Detection 3. Now, Detection 3 is probably the uh, the ability that I'm worried about the most. Of course, Elven Fury, melee, to uh, deal with the pincushion, and uh, Dreamer, not really a combat champ. He's just going to keep that probably at his font for Dream State, so that whenever I uh, cast any spells, he'll get some buffs. We'll grab our we'll grab our top on. We can't deploy yet, and uh, we'll just move we'll just move our trickster along. And at this point, I mean, I might as well go in with uh, pincushion. No reason not to uh, be aggressive at the point at this point. It's only aura one. I like taking the the cheap build on pincushions, not only in this deck but in uh, most of my other uh, under depths decks as well. I think resilient is auto just because. Um, as, you know, as a champion with Arrow Eater, you're going to be taking a lot of AoE attacks, like bombs or cones, or, you know, little uh, little pokes of damage from damage over time stuff. And Resilient uh, sort of helps to counteract that. And then Aura, I mean, you could you usually see rank 3 Aura on Pincushion just to make him, uh, just to give him a little bit more to do when he's not, you know, sitting there attacking. So we put down a Stealth Relic in this font. Uh, that's probably... I didn't take any damage, so... Uh, I'm not sure what that might be. Dream box? Yeah, throwing trap. Uh, I knew it couldn't have been as interesting as a dream box. That's fine. We'll just move back with pincushion. And uh, we'll move back a little more so we don't get attacked with uh, imbue stun. This, uh, this trickster will just move along here. And uh, I don't really, I don't really mind if he splits it up a bit. That'll just make it easier for me to uh, do what I need to do. I'll just say that, and I think we'll go with I think Merc Demon for our for our actual game plan. We'll go with Merc Demon, and uh, I'm sure you can already tell what the uh, what the point of this deck is. So I'll just explain it here briefly for the uh, for the uninitiated. What we're gonna try and do is we're gonna try and uh, basically spam some spells on his shrine, double hatching season, then awaken them instantly with awakened brood, followed by a double price of victory, and finally a dragonic benediction. And what that will do 
is it will spawn um, 10 dragon babies at his shrine. They'll each get an attack off because they'll have 6 AP from all those spells. They'll each get an attack and then they will explode, creating some nice fireworks and immediately destroying his shrine. And uh, that's uh, that's the entire point of this deck. That's the only reason uh, that's all it does is it explodes the shrine in one turn. And uh, this works, by the way, uh, no matter what health the shrine is at. You can, do it on a, you can do it on a full HP shrine. I think the maximum damage you could conceivably deal would be over a hundred, like almost 120, I would think. I haven't done the exact math on it, but all you really need is one attack from at least uh, six of the babies. And then they explode and they deal five damage each. So that's uh, 10 times five um, is 50 damage. So you need the shrine under 50 and then you win. And anything else is just secondary. I mean, I'm basically just deploying the pincushion and the trickster to, you know, harass and be annoying and make him think I'm actually playing a serious deck. Meanwhile, Merc Demon over here is going to shift through the shadows, be uh, be murky and uh, sort of sit. Just, he's just going to sort of sit right here in the middle until I'm ready. So to do this combo, you need uh, 285 Nora in total. So I'm just going to I'm just going to sit back until I have that amount and then we'll uh, go from there. We'll see if he has any counters to it. And uh, most people consider this uh, strategy to be eh, not exactly the most honorable way to fight. But, you know, all warfare is based on deception and, and such. So we're going to keep our uh, tricksters. We're going to keep our tricksters in the way sort of here. We're going to hex the bow mage. Road of Detect range there. We'll just move up a bit. This one's dead to the damage over time, so we're just gonna we're just gonna move him back. And this is actually the real one, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take some AP from Mister Mister Elvin. Sorry, Mrs. Elvin Fury. Those are those are very clearly breasts on his armor there. And uh, we're gonna uh, sorry, we're gonna do a little hex as well. He only has nine damage, so it doesn't do much, but you know. We're gonna we're gonna send in old pin cushion just to make sure that uh, I'm the one who gets the uh, the imp trickster globe. Uh, yeah, right there, right there. And then we'll we'll just send this uh, imp trickster up as well. Take some AP from you. Stealth up. He doesn't have he doesn't have rain of arrows or anything crazy. Just gonna, I'm just gonna move him here into Merc range, so that even if he does take a, a bitty bit of damage, he will not be unstealthed. Meanwhile, uh, yeah, I already moved I already moved that pin cushion along, so we're, I, we could actually sacrifice this trickster. It is a real champion. Mm, I don't really have enough of my combo yet to sort of justify that. I could probably just deploy again, like a, an actual champion. I think Tardigrade is a good one. Yeah, we'll go Tardigrade. So basically, you kind of when you're playing this combo you kind of have to balance between like actually deploying so that you don't you know you don't just lose and uh saving nora for your combo since you do need uh, quite a substantial amount in order to pull it off and uh, that's also not considering the fact that there may be um sort of anti-spell uh abilities or enemy spells in play things like absorb ma or not absorb magic uh, ancient's protection is a big one uh, refute from Iron Fist Stronghold also would stop it. And also anything with blockade. So if uh, the opponent is smart and knows what deck you're playing, they'll keep a blockade champ uh, beside their shrine, preventing anything from gaining AP within its radius, which will completely neuter the combo. However, I'll notice that I'm also running Enslave. And uh, Enslave means that I can target a blockade champ that they put there and make it mine so that blockade no longer affects me. And I've had to do that a few times with against uh, stuff like Whitestone Gargoyle or uh, Therion with uh, Blockade that he could actually potentially be playing. So uh, Experimental War Spirit coming out to uh, stop my pincushion from getting in. And uh, it does, I mean, whenever you're playing this deck, it does look like, does eventually begin to look like you're, you know, you're losing ground, like you're losing the game, but eh, you don't really have to be worried. I'm not worried. Certainly, certainly not. 
And uh, like I said, like, why am I not worried? Well, for one thing, I'm saving 15% or more on car insurance by switching to Geico. But also because the deck I'm playing doesn't really care if it loses the gear, uh, loses ground early or pretty much ever. As long as you keep a stealth champion sort of uh, in spell presence range of the enemy shrine, as I'm currently doing, you, uh, you don't really have to be concerned about much of anything else. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna send pincushion. I'm gonna keep him. I'm gonna keep him ambiguously placed. I wanna. I wanna stay out of attack range. I think. Just for the moment. So make him think I can maybe try and contest next turn. So we're gonna. We're gonna sap a bit more AP on these. Uh, on these guys here. Make our imps as annoying as possible to deal with. Uh, this tree can get detection, right? Okay, he doesn't have it. I always thought it was uh, odd that this thing could get detection somehow, but uh, I guess magic. Magic because magic, I guess. We're going to move this imp, and uh, we could do a little hex. But he has a pincushion, has arrow eater anyway. I'm just going to do a hex. Why not? Just in case he decides to hit tardigrade for somewhat meaningful damage, and we'll keep, uh, we'll keep within merc range as much as possible. And uh, I think we're just going to bank some Nora here, so I'm going to just going to move back one. Because we're going to lose our AP anyway, thanks to uh, imposing Aura. And uh, we want we want the Elven Fury moving this way, like away from our imps, so that he has to spend AP on his Bow Mage and stuff to try and find me. Or is he just going to stun, stun up my pincushion? So what I think I'm just going to do is I'm going to sacrifice this pincushion, because uh, he's pretty much going to die on the following turn if I don't anyway, so I might as well get Nora out of him, get his globe, bring me a little bit closer to my combo. He's going to get two hits from the Elven Fury, who is furiously stacking up damage. Da, 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 da. Border Guard moving down eventually, eventually. Or maybe he'll, maybe he'll go this way to try and find my Imp. I think this Imp See here, and uh, this is another thing you have to consider when playing this deck. If you're on a map where the fonts are close to the enemy shrine, like for example here, or on you know Forsaken Ways two font map, if you can test their fonts, they're they're going to deploy at their shrine. And one of the biggest ways you can counter this deck that I've found is by deploying is just by deploying. Like if you deploy enough champions around your shrine, they don't even have to be blockade champions or like counter abilities or anything. If you deploy enough around your shrine, you, you will block the movement of the babies uh, towards uh, your shrine, and like they'll be engaged as soon as they spawn, so they won't be able to get in position to explode on the shrine. So, uh, if you contest, like if I were to go in and contest, I can't, uh, I can't yet, but if I were to go in and contest with this imp, he would be forced to deploy here and potentially block too many of the uh, the babies, so that I would not be able to do my combo but he's gonna he's gonna kill this imp and this one will eventually die to the damage over time so he's uh at this point i feel like he might have an inkling of what my deck is trying to do since i haven't deployed in a while and uh i'm assuming he knows that merc demon is out i'm, ass I'm assuming that but y you know you never know there's also this uh this imp split that is uh still lurking about which uh, i'm gonna actually keep i'm gonna actually keep over here Make him try and chase that around a little. Now splits, uh, it's worth noting that splits do have spell presence. You can see it there. So if they, because they are real champions and uh, the imp splits are especially good because they have flying, giving me uh, two extra spaces of spell presence. We're going to, we're going to sap a bit more AP and we're going to do a little hex and uh, we might as well attack as well since we're dead. And uh, we're going to do the sacrifice on this pin cushion. And then grab his globe with Tardigrade. Yoink. So that's a bit more Nora for me. And uh, as far as this pincushion goes, I'm uh, I'm gonna I'm just gonna hit twice. Feign like I'm actually playing seriously when in fact I am not. And uh, one one thing that uh, I should probably do here is move out of Merc range because Merc on Merc Demon actually shows up on your other champions as a condition. So I don't want him to know precisely where my Merc Demon is just yet. 
I mean, if he was paying attention, he'd, he'll probably know anyway, but, you know, better to, better to pretend that he doesn't. So this imp's dead. Uh, this tardigrade is going to sit in the font for at least another turn. Void shield, regen, defensive turtle. These things are a real pain to have to one round, or well, I mean, you can't really one round them because of defensive turtle. But they're just, they're just so efficient. They beat so many hits, especially when they're in full faction Sunderlands, they get an additional two reduction from the bonus. And uh, yeah, Void Shield and Sundered Lands in general is just a crazy strong ability. So he's going to leap in here and uh, trigger that defensive turtle. Of course, now I have Resist Physical 3 as well as Regen 2. And uh, he can't actually get any like damage over time. He should have What he should have done is try and get a hit with Illuminate first so that I lose uh, 2 defense, but he did not. He did not, and uh, War Spirit is going to hit pin cushion twice no biggie as i said i'm just i'm literally just waiting for the uh the nora to do my combo i have the full combo revealed the awaken i've got the hatching seasons i've got the price of victories and i've got the benediction so next turn barring anything else i should be able to create some nice fireworks on his shrine and uh ooh, send our send our savage hmm this might fuck things up for me. So if he if he put defensive strike up and the babies spawn in any of the uh, the spaces, then if one of them dies, then they'll all die and I'll lose because I'll have no other way to win without that. So I think I'm gonna wait until this uh, savage moves away just to be just to be extra super safe here. I'm gonna move Merc Demon in a little bit. And we're gonna we're gonna put him over here so that he's in position for next turn. But uh, yeah, I want to I want that defensive strike out of my way before I try the combo. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna stall a bit with Tardigrade, and we're gonna do a little uh, mischief from this lone remaining Imp Trickster split, as well as a hex because we can. Why not? And uh, yeah, that's about it. So I'm gonna, yeah, I'm just gonna hit and back off with pincushion to avoid the double tap. Although it doesn't really matter at this point. And we're going to, hmm, you know, I'm just gonna end the turn there. That should be good. So once uh, once that centaur moves away, I'll uh, I'll try for the combo. And uh, yeah, so this deck. This deck is... I, I don't usually like playing this deck all the time because the thing is, when you play a cheesy combo deck like this, if you play it enough, like, people are going to people are going to realize, like, the combo. And because the, the game has so few players at the moment, if you play enough with the same deck, people will remember you and they'll know that, oh yeah, this guy is playing Egg Bombs. And, you know, they'll realize, like, they'll figure out how to counter it, right? So he hasn't quite moved... Uh, fully out of the shrine range. Mm, I'm gonna have to wait another turn, I think. I mean, there's really no logical reason he would put up defensive strike now, but I mean, it's a zero AP ability. So people would usually with stuff like block and dodge and other zero AP abilities like that, even like people will just put them up because, you know, why not? That sort of, you know, why not type reasoning. So I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure that I play completely around his uh, his counter here. And he actually he's, he's still biting his teeth out on that tardigrade. <laughs> it's gonna live yet another turn. Um, if I had a, a sacrifice or something, I could maybe. Although I don't even really need to. I could I could even put down a fire ruby since I'll have extra Nora. Or I could bloodthirsty blade it. That would be that would be funny. I have more than enough Nora now to do my uh, my combo. It's just a matter of waiting. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna back off all the way with pincushion. And we're going to do a little bit more mischief. He didn't actually deploy at this font. I guess he's a, like I'm sure he knows by now what's what's about to happen, or he should have some idea, right? We're just gonna can I eat the defensive? Oh, I can try and eat the defensive strike with this. All right, I was worried for nothing. He didn't even have it up, so uh, we'll we'll just do the combo now. And uh, I'll burn a demon call 
just on the off chance there's like a, an anti-spell something or other lurking about. But uh, I'll move in one more. So here we go. Hatching season. Hatching season. Wake and brood. Spawning a bunch of babies. I'm going to do POV. The second POV. He's swallowing a shit ton of spells, but I do not care. And there's the Dragonic Benediction. So it has to be done in that order because Dragonic Benediction uh, spell locks you. So if you cast DB first, you won't be able to cast your doubled POV and you won't have enough AP for the babies to all get a hit. So they'll all hit once, 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 once. Yeah, come on. Hit. 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 And this is the point where they most people usually surrender, but I'm hoping he does not. Since I like seeing the explosions. Well, let's back off one. I don't even need this last hit, but we'll do it anyway. And boom. And there we go. Emptying out the Sundered Lands orphanages. One baby at a time. And that will be the win. One second left on the clock, too. Perfect kill. Couldn't get any more perfect. So uh, that will be the game, and uh, thank you all for enduring this uh, horribly, uh, this horribly gimmicky playstyle of mine. And uh, we'll see you in the next one.